Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning. We will start with a karaoke. Do you want to go? No. Come forth from above, from below, and within the environment. Wellness and vitality brought together in harmony. Tihe Mauri Ora. Thank you. Okay. So we have an apology from Councillor Grant. Um, can I have a mover and, and a seconder, please? Yes, I'll move. I'll second. Okay, so we've got Beth and Rika. And we'll move on to the public forum. So we have uh, Jane Nightingale about the slider turtles. Yes, yes you are. Very important. Thank you, because I know yeah. I'm not doing this to offend anyone, and I'm thinking what's good was actually, and we've got them amazingly and close, and yeah. that's what we want to do. Mm. Okay, <laughs> so I'm Jane Nightingale, and I'm a volunteer for Waikato Regional Council and trying to remove the really excited two dogs from Cook's Beach stormwater ponds and to prevent their spread. Red Ed Slider Turtles are classified as one of the world's 100 worst invasive alien species by the World Conservation Union. But you can keep them as a pet in New Zealand. But they last for 40 years and they're very good at escaping. So when you get them, they're only like that small when they go in the aquarium. But when they, this is a, he's probably about five years old, he's a male, uh, but they get to the size of a dinner plate and yeah, they can wreak havoc. As two years ago, there were four known breeding sites in New Zealand, and Cook's Beach stormwater ponds is one of them. Yeah. So, quite a concern. Mm -hmm. is that a real fear? No, this is the ceramic one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I keep my five Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So, breeding <laughs> Deliberately released into the ponds about 10 years ago, which is illegal under the Wildlife Act, along with catching them from the wild to sell or to release elsewhere. We have removed 70 so far, which have all been sent to Waikato University. Um, of the 70, five were females. Two of them were x-rayed and they were carrying the eggs. Mm -hmm. These five females have all been released pets, as to date there is no known female turtles being hatched in the wild in New Zealand. And the sex of the eggs is temperature dependent. Between 20 to 27 degrees, every egg will be a male. Above 31 degrees, they will be female. 28.5 degrees is what they call the Goldilocks temperature, and they can be either male or female that will hatch. And Professor Ling from Waikato University is predicting within 10 years, there will be a female turtle offspring will, will be hatching. A female can walk up to several caves looking for a suitable nesting spot and she can remain fertilised for up to five years, laying two to three clutches per year. So I got quite concerned about Cook's Beach when I heard that children were catching them and passing them around at school. One girl told me she caught one, took it home to her poetry, and it's now been released on the farm. Mm. So this is one of those one that was handed in from Riverview Road last week, and it's been several sightings in the stream behind, which is a worry because I've been told by Alison that there is banded rail and fern birds nesting in that area. Three have been handed in from the wetland area in Longreach, and one two kilometres away at the corner of Purangian and Halfway Road. Now I went round to everyone to ask if it was their pet turtle, because I thought, how did this turtle get all this way, so he must have swum up the poo right because it was no one's pet. And also, um, Benson Lockhart has told me um, that there's been sightings in the Waiwara River behind the mm. Corrigan Pool. Mm. At the Matarangi Golf Course Ponds, there's also another volunteer monitoring the trap because they are up there as well. So, why we should be so concerned about these mm. turtles is becoming our next major pest to eradicate is as they've been omnivores, 
they can impact on a wide variety of aquatic plants, insects, eels, and small fish species. Now, think white bait. That should get you all upset and worried. Essentially, they're another foreign competitor in an already stressed environment. They take over nests of water birds to use as basking sites, plus they're known to eat eggs and young birds. The professor has some in his backyard in Waikato. He's got some large females, and he wondered where all those little sparrows were going. And he watched them one day in a video, and they came out of the water and grabbed the sparrows. Um, the dog turtles can be very aggressive and they're highly adaptable and tolerate a wide range, a variety of aquatic environments. So they can live in brackish water as well. So once they get into wetland areas, they're impossible to remove, as other regional councils are now finding out. In September 2022, Auckland Regional Council banned the selling and breeding of the breeding slider turtles, which I feel could become a problem for us. People are looking for somewhere outside of Auckland for abandoning their pets. I've been told by uh, Danielle Kruger, she's the Biosecurity Officer at Waikato Regional Council. There is a national comms campaign currently being worked on to raise the awareness of just how long turtles live for, their needs and their impacts they can have on the environment if they are released, which will be great to make the public more aware that the cute little turtle they built for the aquarium is going to get to the side of the dinner plate and will be around for 40 years. So sometimes the turtles have actually outlived the owners. So, um, yeah, we can keep them as a pet, but we just don't want them out of the wild. So this one, as I said, he's a male, got long claws, and he's got a, a longer tail than the, than the females. So it's good at this stage, all the, all the ones that we've set off, sent off, they, they've found none of the hatchlings have been females. So I keep sending them to Waikato and um, yeah, hopefully we can get them out of the ponds and educate people how, how to keep, look after their pets. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Does anyone have any questions? Yes, I do. Isn't that inevitable? When they, the owners die, whatever they escape, they're going to get into the wild anyway. Yeah, that's what's been happening. Yeah. People are like, well, what do I do with this? Mm. Um, they are quite hard to... Um, get put down, a vets probably wouldn't even bother. Um, yeah. Oh, so they and they do escape really easy. Yeah. yeah. You need to have a proper yeah, yeah. a proper fenced in area. Yeah. yeah. Um, another question. Um you said they lay a clutch per year. How many eggs per clutch? How many? It could be from three up to fifteen. Yeah. So a large number have been I've talked to a lot of people that have got eggs um got the hatchlings out of their cook speech ponds. There's been a lot. I don't yeah. believe that's a lot because it hasn't moved. Thank you for the chance of race possible. Yeah, it would, yeah. They're all trying to catch them. Yeah. But like, most countries are banning them, but I mean a lot of countries have like, their own native turtle population. So that's why the of course, we just don't want them in our wetlands. Mm. Over on the, um, on the Great Barrier, there's three there. They know there's three because the um, pilot came into land and the turtle went across the no. runway no. and they've done an eDNA test of the water. They've caught one. I think they just can't um, get the other two out. So um, very elusive. So we just want to bring this for you into the... Yeah. And it's for your turtle. Through, through, through. If we should, we should come across a turtle, what should we do? Uh, ring Waikato Regional. Oh, you can contact me yeah. or ring, and I get them to Henson Lockhart and he gets them over to Waikato or ring out the OA 100 number, Regional Waikato Council. Yeah. If there's any sightings outside of the Cook Beach Ponds, they want to know about it because mm -hmm. they want to help out its spread. Um, but if it, at the ponds, just get hold of Benson probably or me, um, yeah, we'll right, catch them. I'm just, I'm just wondering through the chair if we can distribute those either phone numbers or email addresses and even do a bit of awareness raising amongst our own mm. friends, people we know, maybe an article, Jane, in the informer or something over summer to hit because people yeah. think they're cute and the kids will collect them and probably take them home. I was thinking about that, but about a month ago they did an article about a lady coming around and uh, telling the people at the children at the library how cute the kids were. And, but there was nothing about how to keep them as a pet. So I'm um, just going to wait to see what they get up here. And they seem to think that I hope they're going to get it done by the end of the year, this natural, national 
comms campaign. So that would be good if I could get that out. Also, time mind. Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm happy to do those for you on that. Yeah. I know mean, the voice quite well. Yeah. Right. Okay. No, but it's just, it's just, it's just education. Your age. Yeah. Yeah. It's just education. Yeah. What about just popping in the really corner? Yes, I've got that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's I'll put on the questions for clarification at least. Yeah. 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 Have a discussion offline. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is there anything else? Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Well Another related species. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. We have uh, Noel on affordable housing. Okay. Just a quick one, and then in form of uh, just a couple of questions. Um, which probably. Uh, one, uh, why does council own so much land and property in Mercury Bay? Two, why is the council owned land so highly valued? GV, etc. Uh, the third uh, point I'd like to make is uh, would it be possible to divest some of this council owned land specifically for affordable housing? Okay, thank you for your questions. We can come back to you after the meeting. Okay. Was there anyone else you wanted to talk? No, no good. Okay. Um, can we have a mover and a seconder for the public forum? Okay. Second. Okay, we've got Rita and Delhi. Okay. Um, oh, all those in favour, say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Um, so we have no additional items on the agenda. Um, can I have a, a mover and a seconder, please? Yes. We've got this. Um, there's no additional items on the agenda, so we move. So I just move forward. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Does anyone have any conflicts of interest? Okay. We're all good. Okay. So the minutes for confirmation. Um, May I have a mover and a seconder? Uh, Rika and Peter. Uh, all those in favour say aye. Oh, yeah. Aye. Okay, motion carried. Oh, right. Yeah. Any again? Okay. Uh, so the Mercury Bay Correspondence Report. I move to receive the report. Can I have a mover and a seconder? Delhi, seconder? Yeah. Peter? Is there any discussion? Okay, all those in favour say aye. 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 Against? No. Carried. Okay, so the CAPEX work program. Can I have a mover and seconder to receive the work program? Carolyn, we've got Bruce online. If you need to okay. back to him and second by Rika. Does anyone have any questions or discussion about this? I'm well, just waiting for it to load up. <laughs> Sorry, just <laughs> it's locked. Actually, can I ask Bruce a question about the data check mode? Is that okay? Yeah, go ahead. Morning, Bruce. Morning, Deli. Um, just, I was out at Orpito on Sunday at their Great Chaos meeting, and um, there was a little bit of conflicting in, um, information around whether or not the tender of the blackjack has actually been allocated and what okay. the time is. Can you just clarify that, please? Yeah, so what we did, um, yeah, through the chair, what we did with the Blackjack Road, um, you might recall, is we've awarded the Tapu Corrigan work, and then there was a number of contractors that were unsuccessful with that project. We're then working with those other contractors on Blackjack Road and a couple of other sites around the district to get them on as quick as possible rather than going through a full tender process. So we've got prices from um, a couple of contractors for Blackjack Road, prices and methodology, and the team are just working through that at the moment. Um, so nothing's been awarded that I'm aware of yet. Um, and really the whole um, challenge that it comes down to at the moment is how to get it done as quick as possible without disrupting um, 
everyone who lives out that direction unduly. And so obviously um, <clears throat> the quickest way would be to close it all off and just work on it flat out. But obviously no one can then get to their houses and all the rest of it. So it's trying to strike the right balance between allowing access, but allowing enough time to work on the road safely and quickly. So they're just working through a couple of different options there um, to try and, and do what we can to get it all sorted before Christmas. Um, if we leave, um, if we're too kind of permissible, I suppose, on um, keeping the road um, open, uh, as much as we can at the moment, that will drag the program out and push us past Christmas. Uh, if we try and um, clamp down on on access and use of the road at the moment, we'll get the job done. But obviously, we'll um, we'll annoy all our customers. So again, it's just trying to strike the right balance there. It could be, you know, like what I imagine we'll end up with is there'll be options around, you know, the roads closed at certain times of the day and people can't go through, and you know, so it's just trying to manage all of that. But I haven't had an update um, since last week from the team on whether they've landed that yet or not so that's kind of currently where it's at awesome thank you bruce but we will be doing um just a supplementary follow-on from that we will be doing some more comms about that and getting out there a little bit um, more i have been in touch with um amber around the um uh, the rate Pay association and stuff out there so i have been talking to her and providing information but we will go out with some wider public comms um shortly on that yeah awesome thanks bruce Rika? Morning, Bruce. Um, how's the public currently coming along? Are we going to be done before Christmas? Uh, yeah, through the chair, everything's going well on Tapu Kauragli and they've got the main site and then they've got two other sites that they're working on. Um, so yeah, everything's going well. Um, we did have some issues, um, uh, some issues around um, people still thinking they could access the site, which obviously they can't. Um, the site is closed and they've got to work on it. So, um, but we're just working through those issues. That's that's no dramas. Um, Kelsey's um, the contractors who won the the tender are getting stuck into it and um, and really doing a great job. And and so yeah, everything's going well at this stage. So yep, no um, issues anticipated about getting open before Christmas. Thank you. Thanks, Bruce. Um, is it true that the State Highway 25 is going to be open by March? <laughs> 25A. <laughs> 25A. It's the 25A, sorry. Through the, through the chair, yeah. Um, I would hate to speak on behalf of Wakakatahi, but um, <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm confident, I'm 100% confident they'll be open by March. The bridge beams are in, you might have seen the pictures, bridge beams yes. are in, which looks fantastic. Awesome. Yes. Yeah, they're moving really fast. So um, yeah, I've I've got um, total confidence in our partners, Wakotahi, that they've got their stuff sorted on 25A. Get it up, Bruce. <laughs> Another question through the chair. Is that okay, Chrissy? Just looking at the Younger Esplanade redevelopment appointment scheduled for project management October, it's now the 25th. What's the haps? Yep, it's through the chair. So um, we went out with an RFP to four um, parties. We received three expressions of interest. They've been scored. Um, we have selected the um, winning contractor, so it will be Urban Solutions Limited, um, and um, they've already made a start, but the, the paperwork is just in the process of being um, ticked off. So we're looking for first meetings um, probably in the second week of November, third week of November, okay. something like that. But the first action will be to prepare that comms and engagement plan, um, to update the project plan, come and see the board, check that everyone's comfortable and then the advisory committee will be formed. So we're we're a week or so behind, but we're we're still on track. Excellent. Thanks, Dean, for that update. Okay. Urban Solutions. Yep. Why does that name sound familiar? That's Lorenzo yeah. Canal. Ah, uh, okay, thank you. Yeah, Lorenzo Canal and yep. the team. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Oh, so we get Lorenzo over this side, do we? Okay. <laughs> Okay, we're further questions. Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Through the chair, I have an update on the Mercury Bay Boating Club, um, yeah. because, which is what I think is on the other information updates. Um, so the boat club just sent through last night um, an email just to confirm that they have made a concession application to the Department of Conservation. Um, and that's for a lease of the reserve at Dundas Street. Um, and so 
the um, that process is a, is a dot process. It does require public consultation. Um, that usually would take around six to 12 months. However, because there is a um, cyclone recovery uh, piece of work available, it's possible that DOT can use that to fast track um, that application. Is that similar legislation to what enabled 25 hour to keep going quicker? Yeah, and they're just assessing whether that can be used or not. So there's a chance that it could be um, treated as a, as a fast track, um, but they're not quite through that yet. Um, a second piece of work is that um, they're preparing a resource consent application um, for council. So in terms of the, um, the land use there, everything complies apart from a five metre side yard rule. And that side yard is with the Crown and the Marina. Um, they've already spoken to the Marina and have the support. They've spoken to WRC and have the support there. Um, so it's really a minor infringement. Um, but in all other respects, the establishment of a community facility um, is a permanent activity in terms of the district right. plan. So it's uh, yeah, but a consent will still be required for the side yard rule. Um, but it's important to note that both sites still remain in contention. Um, so they haven't ruled out Tapatapuati yet. Ooh. They're just looking at both sites concurrently. Fantastic. Um, through the chair, can I can I have three questions for Bruce? <laughs> and then the last three on the um, sorry, Bruce. <laughs> The last three on the um, CapEx program and um, Cook Speech Lakes Management. So um, a very positive meeting was held at Cook Speech, what, 10 days ago, Rika? Myself, Rika, Greg Roche, um, Heather, Steve Lloyd and the guy from the Grass Cup company called New Zealand Waterways, not to be confused with Pity and Waterways. Um, and they're very keen to get hold of Brett Houston and Greg and have a follow-up meeting. Yep. Um, so just reporting back on that, Hahe Bollard attended Hahe Ratepay's meeting on it's just a blur. Um, still really concerned, still very keen to have signage trialed for the summer period. Yeah. Um, Still very worried about the precedent that, that might see the entire peninsula that nobody can drive any vehicle onto any beach. So that came through very strongly. And the third one is number two, Monk Street. Um, are we on track to get that gravel in there and be able to park on it this summer? Oh, good one. <laughs> uh, right, thank you for those three questions. Um, so um, through the chair, um, I will have a chat to Mo and make sure that Brett is um, engaged in that Cook's Beach issue and that he's um, that he's contactable and, and and can be engaged in those discussions. So I'll jump on that. Ha uh, hey Bollard, we are doing the signage. Um, obviously Derek Thompson is out, but I know Derek's team, we've had quite a few staff away actually for various reasons. Um, so unfortunately that slowed us down a little bit, but I know the team were working on the signage and as requested by the board, we'll be running that past the board before that, that goes out. So um, that's definitely on on the on the go still Thank uh, you. and to um, monk street i don't know about that and so i'm hoping that heather's put her hand up because she wants to tell you about that um thank you bruce i can just say about the ha hey bollard that the staff are definitely working on signage that should be out before the end of the week to the community board and the ha hey resident ratepayers to have a look at that does that mean that there won't be a blocked access they're going to trial signage only or uh, no they're still considering a gate so i just need to find out more about that because you know i heard the messaging out of ha hey but um, I'm also hearing the internal messaging. And the only update I have on Team Monk Street is that they've applied for the resource consent and that's going through the resource consent process. I don't know how long that will take. So sorry, not not a thing. Not, not a definitive answer. Resource consent by heart since. Yeah. Yeah. No, we went back to whether there was no my I have a question though for Bruce about Cook Drive stormwater. Yes. Yes. So has that gone out for tender? Uh, I'm just trying to just let me stand by. One moment, please, Paula. <laughs> uh, I believe so. Yeah, I believe so. But what I can do is I can get an update and just confirm that 100%. But 
Yeah, Mo was talking about that the other day, so I'll double check on that and let you let the board know. Yeah, that'd be that'd be great. Thank you. Give you that confirmation. Yep. Yeah, and just time frames, if I may have a second question. Sure. Um, South Highway West. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, that one it was taking a bit more time, obviously. Um, and I know um, Ed and Mo's team is working on that um, around the land issues, so I'll find out that one as well. Thank you. Okay, so we're all done. Um, so move to receive the CAPEX works program. Yes, um, all those in favour say aye. 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 Against? Motion carried. So the tourism infrastructure funding. Um, this keyboard right here? Are you still in the hot seat, Bruce? Yes. Sorry. Correct. Still in the hot seat. Okay. So ask for a mover and seconder to receive the motion. We've got, we've got Delhi. I'll second. And recap. Um, are there any questions for discussion? Yes. Go ahead. Um, I am struggling immensely. And this isn't this isn't a personal attack, Bruce. I'm just struggling as a representative of our ratepayers, that the Buffalo Beach toilets could cost six hundred thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. So even if it's sixty square meters, that's ten thousand dollars a square meter. And I just cannot get my head around spending ratepayer money for a public convenience at that level. So I don't know whether I have to just shut up and trust the process that it's been costed out and analyzed or do we retender it or I just don't understand that amount of money for a public toilet on the waterfront. Sure. Um, so through the chair, I'd, I'd never expect you to shut up and just accept it. Always happy uh, <laughs> to be queried on these things. Um, the challenge is when you break it down to a per square metre um, uh, figure, that sounds outrageous and, and there's no way you can get your head around it. But obviously, most of us in our heads, when we, we hear that, we think that it's not how much it costs to a house or even to do a bathroom in a house, you know, and so wait, where is this disconnect? Um, the reality is, obviously, is that um, public toilets have to be built to a much higher standard to actually last. So they are very expensive to build. We built one in Island View last year that was a four pan toilet and that was about $400,000. Um, we also, when we did the Tyrua Pepe one, that was a few years ago, and that was obviously a lot larger, but that was 950. So um, that gives you a bit of an idea about how much toilets do cost. There's a couple of suppliers in New Zealand that provide um, uh, provide the public toilet um, to the standard that's required, and uh, and so at this stage we haven't we haven't tendered that. That's just based on estimates um, from knowing how much public toilets do cost. I, I totally get what you're saying, and it's very hard. Um, it's hard for for me or for elected members to stand up, you know, in a public meeting and, and justify why to public toilets cost that much. Um, and there's there's not there's not really too much more I can give you, unfortunately. Um, the other thing that we will be having to do for the Buffalo Beach toilet is the consenting for that um, project will be um, will be quite rigorous, based on being right on the coastline, um, looking at all those issues around um, climate change and sea level. So. So to get the consent over the line to, before we even start building it, we are going to have to jump through quite a few hoops. And these are the kind of things that that anyone who's doing any development or, or building in those um, environments have to go through. So so when you add in the cost of the consenting, you add in the um, the extensive cost to make a public toilet robust and stand up to that public use. That's where you end up at 600K roughly. So again, I don't that probably doesn't kind of give you too much comfort, but um, yeah, that's that's probably what I'd respond to that, Delhi. Yeah, I really appreciate that, Bruce. That's a really good explanation, and hopefully, people who watch the recording of this meeting will have some understanding as well. But yeah, it is yeah. a bit of a pill to swallow. Yeah, but it is. That, yeah, So it's just a refurb in terms of same footprint. Um, I don't know if the footprint will be exactly the same. I think it possibly um, might be a bit different. I don't know the details. And again, I've got um, Faith online who's who's um, doing a fantastic job helping me out while Derek's away. Um, but yeah, but again, there's quite a lot of quite a lot of detail in beneath obviously all these costings. And I don't think Faith will have that level of detail. And I certainly don't have that level of detail. But but once we get more clarity, 
um, over it and uh, and possibly when Derek's back early next month, I'm happy to provide an update to the board to give you a bit more detail on that. Um, Faith, is there anything that you know, put you on the hot seat, but um, yeah, is there anything that you know that I don't? Uh, yes, through the chair, um, yeah, Bruce, I, uh, my understanding is that there's an issue with uh, tree uh, tree roots um, yeah. interfering, yes. uh, so that, that potentially the um, location might change very slightly, so they might have to, you know, orientate differently, and also potentially the design, so I'm not 100% sure about what um, type of public convenience that is, but there was some talk about um, maybe a, a different design might be required. Thank you. That was where my question was heading was really around the trees that are in that immediate vicinity and whether the thinking would be to retain those um, and yeah. have the talk about sort of work around the trees. Yeah. yeah. Yep, through the chair. Um, that's my understanding is where the thinking is at, Rika, Rika, that they were going to potentially move it slightly to avoid the trees. Yeah, okay, if possible. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because we just don't want them damaging the floor, the roofs, like they have to this the existing Correct. one. Correct. Yep. Perfect. Thank you. Can I ask another question, Lucy? Okay. Um, so looking at the options for consideration, one, number one is not to proceed and to return the 400000 grant from the TIF. And option two is to recommend to council that we cover the Mercury Bay local rate covers the additional 200000 to proceed with the project. I'm just thinking we've got the toilet block on the, you know, opposite the corner of the racecourse road, you know, the superhighway, and then we've got one at the wharf. Do we need that toilet block there at all? As an option to actually remove it. Um, so through the so through the chair, always an option to um to look at removing public toilets. Yeah. Um again, I I'd probably rely on um, I suppose elected members and people in the community regarding how palatable that would be as a, a as an option. Uh, like I say, always an option to to do that. Um, I just don't know the community well enough in that location, I suppose, and how much um, the use is. Again, Derek would have a much better handle on the usage of the toilet, um, but I, I would say that our usage stats would support that it stays. But again, I, I don't have that, that level of detail on, on hand. Apologies. Um, just further to that, I'm thinking uh, when we had a look at some infrastructure in Fung Natal the other day, and those pods, you know, the ones that have the electronic door and play music yes. and yes. the look, a few yeah. of them sort of being dropped in. I'm sure they're cheaper to actually install, but to plant, I mean, they're not prettiest looking mm. pod, mm. but planted out, has anyone considered dropping one of those in, you know, with just one male, one female? The door that shuts automatically with a little light on the outside, um, rather than a all bells and whistles, um, terrazzo tiled, gold plated tap, six hundred thousand dollar dunning. Yeah, no, through the, through the chair, um, I think all those options will be considered. Um, I, I can assure you, there's not going to be any gold plated taps, so you can rest <laughs> easy um, around that. But um, but yeah, I suppose it is a, it is around trying to put the right type of facility in the right location. You know, like obviously you have high tourist numbers um, and a lot of visitors. And so again, it's just around trying to balance that out. Plus in that, uh, you know, kind of iconic location right on the coast there. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, there's, there's always options that, that can be looked at um, for, for the different different styles of toilets we could use. Thanks, Bruce. Uh, Rika? Yeah, I was just going to say, I think removing it wouldn't be, it wouldn't work. The, the one down the far east way too small. There's only one pan, I think, mm -hmm. the, the new one down yeah, the wall is four, yeah, eight. Um, but I was going to suggest I was going to actually move option two of the suggested resolutions, and then start if we can sort of look at some options. But I think we've got been given four hundred thousand dollars worth of funding yeah. towards this toilet project, and I would not like to see us miss that opportunity. Absolutely agree. Yeah. agree. And it'd be nice if we could pull it closer to the four hundred if we possibly could. Yeah. Okay. Understand. Yep. Okay, so we want to uh, recommend to council that the two hundred thousand dollar unbudgeted funds allocated from the Mercury Bay Conveniences Activity to enable the Buffalo Beach project to proceed. All those in favour, say aye. Aye. Any against? 
Okay, motion's carried. Thank you, board. Thank you, Bruce. Okay, on to the action schedule. Can I ask for a mover and receiver to receive the action schedule report? We've got, we've got Dally so, and Caroline. Um, anyone have any questions? Rika? Um, I'm not sure whether these dates, I think they've all just been sort of transpired into the same September date, but um, on the left-hand side there, um, I know CCTV is something that has certainly been um, floated around this table for, I would say, a couple of years, uh, particularly in the vicinity just outside of our building here. And I was really disappointed that we have moved so slowly um, and the vandalism and damage that was done to that space, um, not last weekend, the weekend before, is really, re it's really sad for our kids. And I, I applaud you, Dean. I know that you've been involved in getting a replacement something up there for the kids to use. Um, but I just don't think it's good enough that we have taken so long to get moving on this whole CCTV project. And I know we're waiting on policy to come through, but we really need to move a lot faster. And yeah. the village is yeah, yeah, and and it's not just the centre of town that's asking for it. A lot of our coastal communities are asking for it. And we really, um, we just need to get moving. Yep, for the chair, I do do have an update on that. Um, so yes, there is the, the policy piece of work, uh, which is looking at council zone cameras um, and also trying to look at how we might support other cameras in the district. Can we um, have a time frame on when that will be ready? Because that's been we've been talking about that for yeah, a long so time. Yeah, that's coming. Um, uh, coming this year, next in, year. In the next few months, I would say. It needs to go to the leadership team first. But more importantly, we've done some work on um, the LTP for this. And so what we're looking at is having a bit of OPEX in year one, and it's been put into the budgets for council to consider. The OPEX will help us determine district-wide um, the cameras that we need, a piece of work to do that. In year two, we're looking at um, 10 cameras across the district, four of which would be in Mercury Bay. Um, so putting some budget in there for that, and then ongoing after that, looking at regular OPEX to be able to maintain those cameras. So that's been put in there um, in the last couple of weeks, and we'll be in front of council for consideration um, at your next workshops. Hey, Lena, thank you. So um, Dean's just gone off the cost side of things, um, but the actual uh, draft policy is coming through leadership team tomorrow. It's been a little bit delayed. We had staff in this following um, events, looks like from Gabriel, um, but it's, it's on the agenda. Thank you. Are there any other comments on the action schedule? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I think um, this will probably be interested in this one as well, is it says that um, Mike Bennett from Fulfia and Waka Amber says it's closed, and that was his request to find a suitable area of land for permanent storage shed for Waka Amber. Um, we are two weeks for that one. Maybe yeah. that's a head that we can do the chair. Um, it's close on the action schedule because we've We've done that action of meeting and speaking yeah. with Mike. Yeah. Um, we met with Mike, Mike at the current location, and what he really wanted at that point was something formally written to say that they could keep their walker there. We can't do that because it's not council land, it's um, Waka Kotahi land. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Waka Kotahi had never spoken to them about moving them or anything like that. So, um, so we had to talk about that. We had to talk about um, cleaning up around it. And then we looked at options close by for putting a shed and we haven't come up with anywhere that is that is secure, basically. So um, Mike was happy with the conversation. Good. Um, he has got some other alternatives that he's considering. We haven't, you know, closed our minds to the fact that if something comes up, that we have a brilliant idea that we'll be like straight back in touch with them and say. But one of the difficulties was that wherever, because it's only a garden shed, so wherever we put it it could potentially be vandalised and there's a lot of equipment to be um, lost 
in that case, but he was comfortable with the conversation at this point. Yes. Could I just ask um, if we can find the boating club a home, whether or not one of those um, containers that are on the Makapapa Ohoka yes. Reserve, and you know, the fact that it could be painted up and look beautiful, and it's a permanent fixture, it could have, you know, the other two are painted on it or whatever whether that would be an option. The part of the conversation with Mike was that we made a suggestion, it can only be a suggestion, yeah, sure. that he reached out to the boating club to see if there was any opportunities to partner with them yeah. um, in, in both storage and location and all those kind of things. Um, and so that's been left in Mike's um, court and he was going to look at those, at having some conversations there. Can I just say something? I think he had need our total call at the council um, you know, support him, you know, mm. just let him, don't let him just go in there, yeah, just, sure. you know, mm. by himself, jeez. I've been there, so talk a little. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or even um, through the chair broker that, that meeting with Boating Club or whatever, like support them in their co partner to get a really meaningful outcome. Through the chair, we have also approached the Boating Club and had that conversation and made ourselves available. Oh, nice, Dean. Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay, good to hear. Any further discussion? Okay, all those in favour say aye. Oh, aye. No, 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 I've got something else. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Just, you know, when you get that niggly. That container down by, Mark, oh, no, down by Pohoka Park. The Waka Ama gears will fit in one of them. Mm. Why can't we just find them a space to put their um, like container? The conversation. They, they may not, you know, they all want their own identity, not riding off someone else. And it's the only Waka Ama entity here in Fitiana. That's what I'm trying to say. Why are we trying to pop them off into something with someone else? Please give them some identity. Yes, sir, the chair, what we can do is we can reach out to Mike again. Yes, and um, absolutely. Make sure he's absolutely got all of the support that he needs. Uh, make sure that all of the options are on the table for him. Um, so we'll, we'll do that between now and the next meeting. Kia ora, Dean. Thank you. Yes, Kia ora, Dean. <coughs> Okay. Uh, all those in favour say aye. Aye. Okay. Any against? No. Motion carried. Okay. We can close the meeting at 9.43. Thank you, everyone. Well done. Gonzalez. Thank you. No, we did well. Thanks. Thanks, Chair. Well done. Thank you. I'm back. Lovely job.